I'm Tony Sklar with BNet TV. We are here at the Small Cell Global Congress in Berlin. I am speaking with Mr. Ran Avatel from Saragon. How are you today, sir? I'm great. How are you? Very well, thank you very much. It's a great conference. Berlin's a good city. A little cold, but uh, such is that time of year, and I'm not in New York right now, so I'm not as wet as I should yeah, be. Not as wet, yeah. The, the perfect storm just hit the other side of the globe. Now, however, getting home, that might be a little bit of a challenge. But I'll tell you what, for all the people out there in BNET TV land, why don't you give us a brief overview of Saragon and where you fit within this small cell ecosystem? So Saragon is the number one wireless backhaul specialist. What we do is microwave, licensed, unlicensed. Um, people usually in our business refer to us in the spectrum. So it's 6 to 42 gigahertz and then 60, 70, 80, sub 6. This is how people refer to us. But we can take a more holistic approach and, and look at the um, environment, not just as small cells, macro cells, but more than a head net. HetNet is about heterogeneous networks where you uh, mix and match different types of, uh, uh, of cells, different types of de deployment scenarios. So what we do, we do backhaul. In the HetNet environment, we, do, we go beyond backhaul. We do also frontal, uh, which is a relatively new term, and I will explain. In, in, you know, frontal is about taking transporting the information not from the base station back to the core, it's from the basement unit to the radio unit. Originally, just 50 meters from the base station uh, tower, uh, from the base to the top, that's 50 meters, that's called a CPRI interface, never mind. Uh, but now people in Asia are talking about building those macro or super macro or you know, super storm, super macro sites, 1,000 uh, radio units connected to a single digital unit. And then all of this transport is called frontal. So, uh, first of all, no pun intended, but it sounds hot. It sounds like there would be a lot of heat involved in putting that type of super conductiveness together for back. That's a lot of transport. Yes. So, this is where companies like Saragon play. Uh, Originally, it was planned for fiber, uh, but this limit the deployment, the idea. Uh, you need to understand first that deploying those clouds uh, save a lot of money for the operators, especially in lease space. You don't need to lease the space for the base station, just for the radio unit. Uh, so they're willing to trade, and in many places, they traded it for more fiber, connecting those digital units to the... To the um, uh, cell sites uh, or the radio unit sites. Um, what we do is allow you to do this in, in a regular spectrum. So when you're looking at the HetNet environment and if you want to enjoy the benefits of the different deployment scenarios, this is one of the most interesting. Um, you said the heat. This is one of the hottest places to be because in an economy, a weak economy like we have, this is a disruptive technology. This can change the business model, and this is the place uh, Saragon wants to be positioned, obviously. So what exactly, you were uh, speaking on a panel here, just uh, as part of this break. Give me a little bit of an overview of what you guys spoke about. So, sure. Uh, we're looking at the uh, HetNet uh, a bit different than most of the, uh, um, most of the other vendors here. Um, obviously, not just backhaul, also haul, you know, looking at the hauling uh, issue, not the backhaul or the frontal. It's a hauling issue. It's a holistic approach. Now, we split the case to two solutions. One is the small cell type of solutions where you find the offload. People were talking about Wi-Fi, femtos, um, elements that are not tightly integrated into the network and can live in, some, in this chaotic environment. Then there are the integrated small cells. These are part of the LTE network. And then there is a new breed of small cells. These are the coordinated uh, type. Um, in LTE Advanced, new standards will allow those small cells to work in a coordinated way with the macro cell layer, improving the spectral efficiencies by fewfold. Uh, so these are the small cells. And each one of those small cells require a different SLA for the backhaul. So it's a different type of solution to provide this backhaul. 
So, okay, I have uh, spoken to you know a number of people throughout the day here, and I would say I have been asking everybody sort of the same similar question here. Fifty percent of the people that I've spoken to have sort of said, "Hey, you know, we're not going to really see a lot of small small cell deployment in the uh, within the space." for probably about two years. The other 50% have said, hey, you know, I think we're actually going to get it sooner rather than later. Uh, and then there was, uh, as well, well, we'll get into after that a little bit uh, differentiation between licensed spectrum and unlicensed spectrum and where we're going to see sort of a balloon within the small cell arena. So I, I would subscribe to this uh, notion of, yeah, it's going to take two years from now, but I, I'm taking a different perspective. Weak economy, people are delaying their uh, ex uh, expenditure. LT advance going to deployment in 2013, and the third element is new business models, small sales as a service. So we have like the perfect storm, not the super storm, something that's not gonna drown us, something that's hopefully gonna flood us, uh, float us, and make um, this whole notion of small sales something that can make actually you know profits to the operators. Uh, so this is our perspective. Uh, on the macro sell side, uh, we think things are going to happen earlier. The macro cell as the hub for aggregating all the small cells. The macro site as uh, a distributed set of three or six sectors, 20 or 30 sectors. I'll, people call it sectorization. Um, and then there's the cloud concept. So I, I believe there's enough disruption in the market that allows you to build a more profitable organization and this will take time till people will figure it out. 2014 looks like the uh, perfect storm year but for the telecom. 2014 is right around the corner by the time we have a couple more global meetings with the Small Cell Congress and get some uh, ubiquity standards, some um, uh, interoperability standards and then pump out the equipment at the specs that each individual, you know, within the mass carriers and each individual carrier kind of needs, get it into the marketplace and deploy it. A year's, a year's not a long time. Um, yes, it's going to take some time. Um, I, I, I think the real driver here is the uh, new disruption. So it's LT Advance and, and, and the Ceron. So these going to happen in 2013 as trials. So 2014 is probably the right guess. Standardization is happening. Uh, and, that's, uh, and there's an industry that is, um, I think, dedicated and, and also highly motivated to solve this. So I see a lot of coordination and a lot of cooperation between the different um, uh, players in this game. So that leads me to my final question, um, Ren. Why is it important for companies like Saragon to attend small cell global congresses to be engaged? Well, this event is one of the, uh, I, I think, mo one of the most successful events I in this uh, domain. Um, the room is completely full, 100 people sitting there. Um, uh, that's a surprising thing for us. We didn't know that it's going to be a, such a successful event. Um, it's important for us because small cells are part of this head net uh, philosophy. And it's, it's going to be not the only way forward, but it's going to be an important path for mobile operators to increase their capacity. Fantastic. Rand, thanks very much for taking the opportunity to speak with us here today at the conference. I hope we get a chance for an update from Saragon again in the future. Thank you very much. Fantastic. I've been speaking with Mr. Rand Avatel from Saragon here at the uh, Small Cell Global Congress. I'm Tony Slar with Bina TV. <laughs>